All right, well, today we're back to work on the C6 competition drift car build. We've been working on the aesthetics of this thing. We got through the majority of the mechanicals, enough to make it drive, take it to the dyno, um, get all that done and do our first test day. The car felt really solid, so we moved on to the aesthetics. And we're on the final, the final stretch of finishing up the aesthetics and getting this thing ready to be wrapped. But we also have some more mechanical things that we need to take care of as well. Just stuff to get the car ready for comp, so that is done and out of the way. We also have a planned test day, so I wanna have the car dialed in and ready for that test day and have it as close to what it's gonna be like at comp as possible. So that way, you know, we don't have to worry about anticipating any changes when we get to the comp round here in a couple weeks. So that's what we're working on, that as well as finishing up the aesthetics so we can see what it drives like as a complete car with a body on it instead of a buggy. See how the airflow is, see how our cooling is, all that good stuff. So that being said, we have a lot of work and not a lot of time to do it. So I need to quit jibber jabbering and we need to get into it. First thing we're gonna do is tackle installing our seats. So we're gonna get the passenger seat in, start working on getting the chill out system in so we can be nice and cool in the car and just chug away from there. We have a bunch of exciting parts that are hopefully gonna be here in the next couple days. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. So let's get to it. I wonder if I can get this thing out without taking the top off. All right, so this is my chill out system. So I got this originally for the Miata. Uh, it's a really cool setup because instead of using ice water where you've got to constantly drain it and add ice, it uses uh, basically a compressor and refrigerates water that it then pumps through a shirt that I wear with tubes on it to keep me cool. It just, boom, two pins pops out and we can swap it between cars. Now there are some things that would be difficult to swap between the two cars constantly and that's why we have extras of all those things. I'm excited to get this mounted. We have a much better spot to put it in this car to where it's gonna be a lot more accessible than it is in the Miata and out of the direct sunlight, which should help. So first order of business is getting our tray mounted. Throw this in the tray here. All right, passenger seat is officialized. It's bolted down, we've got harnesses. We are ready for ride-alongs, which is pretty exciting because I really want Raldo and Josue and Ben to ride in this thing because it is definitely, it was a new experience for me driving it. Uh, we test fitted the chill out deal here and it seems like it's gonna work. We've got enough room for the hose to make the 90 into the duct. Uh, the hose I got isn't quite long enough to reach up to where we we're gonna put the, the NACA duct, but I think we might forego running that because the duct's not really gonna do anything for us but it's gonna fit there and there's still decent room for the passenger, which I'm really happy about. So I guess let's get to mounting it. decided to rivet it in because the only reason this bracket should come out is if we were completely stripping the whole car to like repaint the chassis or if we were moving to another chassis which in which case you just drill the rivets out these keep a much lower profile since we don't have a good selection of countersunk bolts and it's we don't have anything sticking through on the bottom side of the floor because we worked really hard on this car to keep everything above the floor because on this car the floor is the lowest point so rivets seem like a nice choice and they seem to work let's try to toss the old girl back in here there we go 
also keep people from jamming their feet against my wires. All right, now we just gotta hook up the wires and the hoses and mount our, our breakaway. So we're kind of at that stage of the build where I am just trying to get things done and get this car ready to go out on track, but it's one of those things. I couldn't let myself just uh, cloth tape this wiring harness, this power harness to the chill out setup or do something else. I wanted to wrap it the same way we did the rest of the wiring with this uh, shrink tubing. So this is, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, basically like the Raychem DR25. It's a diesel chemical resistant shrink tubing and I just love the way it looks on wiring projects. It's just such a clean look. It's as compact as possible and it has a ton of abrasion resistance. So we spruced up the wiring a little bit, heat shrunk it in that. Even though it was a little bit more work, it was definitely worth it in the end. And then all we needed to do was uh, throw some power lugs on, heat shrink those, and we're ready to install it. Give our chill out setup some power. All right, we got our chill out setup pretty well finished up. So we got our main power wire done and routed back to the battery. We just need to zip tie it up here along with all these other wires, but it's hooked up in a way to where when we hit the kill switch, cuts all power to the chill out setup, but it's got a good strong power source. That's important. The duct here, as you can see a little short, we're gonna get a longer one and run it up to about here. So waiting on that, got that ordered. Also ordered a longer hose. I'd like to weave this in the Miata just to make it easier to swap the systems. Keep as few things as possible that have to swap. Just the system and the duct that's on it and that's it. And if we go with a longer one, we can do a little bit better routing. Just keep it tucked clean out of the way because we need to mount this breakaway setup. Uh, so this is going to go somewhere between there and me. So that way if I have to get out of the car in a hurry, um, I can jump out and with force these will just break away. So I don't have to disconnect myself to get out of the car. We just need those two things, finish it up. Worst case, we can use it as is for right now if they don't come in time, but they should be here in no time. I ordered them from uh, Pegasus Auto Racing. If you need a car like race parts, they're my favorite place to order from. If they have it, I always order from there. I found them when I, I think when I got the chill out set up originally, because they had them in stock and they stock stuff, which for me is huge. Like any place that legitimately stocks the product they sell, uh, kind of goes to the top of the list for me because it means they value the product. Um, just a little tidbit from working in the industry for years. Companies that stock the product always had much better support. And you know if it's in stock, so I like them. Uh, so they normally get stuff super quick. So we shouldn't have that. We shouldn't have to wait too long. But on a more exciting front, we got our, our, our splitter, our whip kit that I did not expect to arrive anytime soon. We got the whole thing in today so we can get this on and see what it looks like. This should be kind of the last piece. Uh, so we got a front splitter. That's going to help a lot. We got side skirts. We got spats. Uh, these go kind of like back there. I don't think they'll work with the overfenders, but we can try. And then a replacement rear chin spoiler, wicker bill, wing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so this is sweet because this is factory, bolts in right there. This one just pops in its place and then we add a couple screws on the end. So it should be pretty easy to install. So I'm pumped. This, this little stuff's what's going to make the difference. Should work pretty perfect. So it's not necessarily pertinent to testing the car, but I really want to see what it looks like. So we're going to try to get it tossed on. Should be pretty easy. So Josue started working on the front splitter. I started working on the rear spoiler. I got these transfer punches, tossed them in. So these basically thread in and have a little punch in so you can mark exactly where the hole is. Helps with lining everything up. I used the stock two holes to bolt it in since we know that's where it needs to go. Tapped it on the ends a few times. Those left are transfer holes. Boom, easy peasy. Grab a drill, blasted a few holes in them, and then we were able to try to start putting everything back together. Now, before we put this on, we want to install our third brake light. So we're not going to use it, but there's this provision here for it. So I figured putting it in would look better than having an empty hole there. So once I got that tossed in, I was ready to final install this thing. So we're using some M6 bolts with some big, big washers. Uh, this thing should not go anywhere, which is how I like to do my body work. I like things mounted as securely as possible. So Josue ran into a little issue with the front splitter. I accidentally ordered all this stuff for a C6 base model, even though we have Z06 body work and we have a Z06 front bumper, which 
apparently is different. So oversight on my part, the splitter is not going to work. We're going to have to get a different one. So we went ahead and tossed the front bumper back on and got this thing off the lift. So that way we could get it jacked up and start installing our side skirts. These things are one of those things you can't really install with the car on a lift because the lift arms go kind of right in the way of where you need to attach it. So these are really the biggest thing I wanted to get and I'm excited about because they make a big, big difference aesthetically. Uh, so I wanted to see what this thing looked like out of the shop. You never get the full picture when it's in and surrounded by stuff. So I decided to back it out and just get a look at it out in the open. Well, we took a little vacation to go do some driving and we are back, we're back at it and we got our parts in to continue on with what we were working on. So we got our 10 foot length of hoses for our chill out shirt. Uh, we got our headlight tent and we got our six foot cut of four inch ducting. So this should work out perfect. So I wanna work on the uh, chill out shirt, get this thing finished up. I think this six foot length should be perfect to get us tucked up nice and high right here. So uh, yeah. You know the deal, enough jibber jabber, let's get back to work. So I wanted to get this ducting done first and foremost, just to make sure that my thoughts, my plan was gonna work. So the easiest way to do it was to pull the whole assembly out, swap the new hose on so I could more easily get to the clamp and then put the whole thing back in, hook it all back up. Luckily again, this is very easy to install and remove. So with it back in, started working on zip tying up the ducting. Now it's not the prettiest thing, I wish we could make it look nicer, but it's functional, it's gonna work, it's gonna do the job of drawing in air that's not right next to where all the hot air is going out. So with that, we started test fitting our 10 foot hose. We figured out basically where we wanted to route it and where we wanted to put the breakaway. So to mount the breakaway, we had to pull the seat out <laughs> yet again. Seats come out many times. Luckily, it's a pretty easy project on this car and then mount that and start getting our hose cut. Now, I never put one of these in the LS Miata for this reason. I didn't want to cut this nice pre-made hose, but we had to do it, so I cut it. I heat shrunk the ends to make it look nice, got it all finished up, and then all we had to do was install the seat yet again. All right, let's see if this pans out. Okay, oh yeah, that's perfect. Sweet, that works. Let's see how far I can get that. Now we will prime the system. So we're gonna have to fill these new lines with the fluid. Chill out system officially installed. Really happy with how it turned out. We got our breakaway nice and close, should be the right spot to break away if need be. Hoses are nice and accessible, but we can easily, you know, tuck them down out of the way. Not have to deal with them. No weeks. Shirt got nice and cold. System is bled. We are ready to go on that front. I'm really happy with how the uh, location of that really panned out. Then a nice spot. The wiring's nice with the heat shrink loom. It's a1 install compared to the Miata. Uh, I'm happy with it. So with that done, it was time to move on to more pressing projects, including our Lexan hatch window. So I went and got that while I was waiting for Josue to get here, set it out in the sun so we could warm up and be a little bit more malleable. And then I started working on my headlight mounts.
The first thing I started on was the main bracket that's going to support the headlight that I'm going to tie into where I already have a mount that I welded on to mount the bumper. So kind of a two-in-one combo. So I was using the belt grinder to basically put a notch in it to weld around the tube that we already have there and then started mocking everything up on the car. So I needed to figure out where to drill my hole and how short to cut it. I made the original piece a little long. And in doing so, I noticed that the headlight needed a little bit of trimming to allow this to sit flush and mount up nicely like I wanted it to. So we used the body saw again. It was a bit of a struggle on this headlight material. It did not want to cut through it very easily, but we got it done. We got it trimmed up how we needed it to, put it all back in, and then marked for our hole. This hole is gonna be critical because if it's not in the right spot, we're not gonna be able to get the headlight lens where we want it. So I pulled it back out, I made two marks, I'm gonna drill two holes next to each other and then connect the two to give us a slot that matches the opening or the slot that's already on the headlight. So drilled out both holes, came back with the carbide burr just to clean it all up, and boom, we've got exactly what we need. So with that done, we're able to toss everything back in again. If you didn't know, with fab work, most of the work is in taking things back off, putting them back on, and you've got to do your due diligence. If you just throw it on there and kind of weld it where you think it's right, it's probably not going to work, especially something like this. So we got it where we wanted, reached in through the fender well, tacked it, took it apart, welded it, and then we are done with mount number one. Now we need to make mount number two. And I debated on how to do this for a while. We could have gone a lot more complex on this, but I went simple. Just drilled a through hole with a bolt, boom, it ties it all in up on the back, and we're good to go. Our headlights are mounted. Quick and dirty little project, just get it done, get them on there so we can move on to the next thing and get this thing ready for testing. So that's what's important here. Uh, this stuff's all gonna get kind of bashed up, so we're not too, too worried about it. Now, while I was working on building the mounting, same way for the second headlight, Josue was working on wrapping it. Uh, I tried to do this myself and did a terrible job, so I let him take the reins on that one this time. So he got the one headlight wrapped, I got the other headlight mounted, pulled that headlight off so while he was wrapping that, I could install the original headlight, just kind of working in unison. He's wrapping, I'm mounting. So while I was waiting for him to finish wrapping the second headlight, I had another project I wanted to tackle that is pretty uh, mission critical for uh, comp rounds, and that is wiring up our taillights. So we have a main wiring that ends there from the chassis harness, but we need to basically build a sub harness to go to the bumper and basically wire to each tail light. We need brake lights and we need running lights. So whipped out my wiring supplies. I've done a lot of wiring on this car. I've done all of it. So I have a bunch of leftover stuff. Built up this nice little harness using the same Deutsch connectors we used on everything. Since we've used this stuff so many times, it is really easy to whip something up like this. It's still tedious and time consuming, but we know the steps. It comes together pretty quickly. So I got my little harness built. I'm happy with it. So we got the other headlight lens finished tinting, so I got to install that back on and we got to see what this thing looks like with two headlights that aren't just set in there with some friction that are actually mounted in there like we want them to. And uh, I gotta say, it's a nice feeling. All right, headlight lenses are officially tinted and mounted. Nice and secure, but really easy to get off. We did some weather stripping down here to kind of squish them up against the bumper. I'm pretty happy with that for uh, one of those quick and dirty, just get it done jobs. Uh, it came out pretty good, they're even. Again, easy to do, two bolts. And now we officially have headlight lenses. This thing looks way better with them in it. When I would pull it out to look at it, I'd just set them in there just because it looks so much better and they just fall. So I'm happy to have that done. It's the little things. I'm at the point where using the 80-20 rule a lot, I could have spent six more hours on these and made them nicer, uh, but one wreck and they're gonna get destroyed anyway. So I wanted to just get something done because our next test day is creeping up on us. And speaking of test days, we have a very exciting part to put on before this next test day. It's a heavy beast. So what we have here is another item from Just Engineering, which if you didn't see the video, they did our angle kit. This is our rear grip kit. So we will be able to adjust our rear suspension settings and dial in even more grip than we already have. That's a nice piece. Right, dude? That is a nice piece. Boom. 
All right, so this is our full rear grip kit from Just Engineering. Uh, we'll get more into this later, but this is a very exciting thing that they came out with because there's not really many options for rear arm stuff for these cars. And most of the times, any of the options that are out there, you have to reuse the stock lower control arm. It's just a very big arm, as you can see by our nice tubular aftermarket ones. Now, the problem is the stock control arm has rubber bushings, which is great for ride quality, not so great for racing because as those bushings move around and flex, your alignment's ever changing. Uh, so you can't really ever get a fixed alignment. I have that problem on the LS Miata because it has all poly bushings and it's still not enough with the torque and the grip. It just, the wheels just kind of moving around on its own. So I really wanted all sphericals on this car and I was really excited that they had this kit uh, because this covers every base. We can adjust all sorts of things to change up our grip levels and how the car drives. We've got all heim joints. We've got more adjustments for alignment. A1, really stoked on this. You know, I took kind of a trial run on the front kit to see if I liked it or not, and I loved it, both conceptually how they built it and then the end result of how the car drove. I mean, out of the box with the base settings, the car felt incredible. So I went ahead and ordered the rear kit too, and uh, we need to get that tossed on before testing. Uh, but yeah, so really happy with where we're at. Glad to have those lenses in. We've got our tail light harness in. So I made this section disconnectable when I built the chassis harness. So that way we can kind of attach this sub harness to the bumper. And then if we ever need to pull the bumper, it's one connector, boom, whole bumper comes off. No fiddling with unbolting grounds and doing that kind of stuff. So I'm happy with the little sub harness we put together. I just need to get some potting compound to basically put some wires into the stock socket here and then go out to our standard Deutsch three pin like we have on most of the stuff on this car. So waiting on that, waiting on a switch for the brake lights, but the wiring's there for that. Uh, but we definitely need to get the brake lights working. We need to get the Lexan row window in and we need to get the rear grip kit on before we go testing here in just a couple of days. So we got our work cut out for us. We got a lot of work to do. We got to mount tires on our new TSW wheels. Uh, this is a lot. I'm gonna stop talking about it because uh, we're, we're gonna do our best to get it done. So that being said though, we are out of time for tonight. It's obviously dark outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it here, um, but I do hope to see you guys next time. So uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.